Well, out of absolutely nowhere, Chelsea have signed Pedro Neto from Wolverhampton Wanderers. In this video, we're going to update you on all the news and then look at his profile and his stats from last season and a few seasons before that to see how he fits into Chelsea and how he will improve us. But before we get into it, like the video and subscribe if you're new. So, first of all, I'm going to read an article from Sky Sports. Chelsea have agreed a £54 million deal with Wolves to sign Pedro Neto. The deal, which was agreed on Friday, is broken up into an initial £51.4 million payment plus £2.6 million in add-ons, going up to the £54 million. The player is understood to be travelling to London for a medical. Neto had also been of interest to Tottenham this summer. Which is where I'd like to begin. Pedro Neto has been long has been long linked with other Premier League teams such as um, I think Manchester City but most notably Arsenal and Spurs have always been in the race and it always looked as though he would eventually end up at Arsenal or Spurs and apparently Spurs had had um, offers knocked back from Wolves this summer this transfer window and it's all come out in the last hour. So it all just exploded after Fabrice Hawkins reported it. Then David Ornstein came out. And then within the same hour, the here we go from Fabrizio Romano was announced. And I'm trying to look for what he said because it was interesting. To, wait, um, it was interesting to as to what uh, Fabrizio Romano was claiming. Let me just look for it. Right, here it is. Um, he said that Jorge Mendes, uh, Pedro Neto's agent, same Cristiano Ronaldo's agent, very famously, was working in a secret way. I wanted to tell you something yesterday on Neto, but all parties wanted to keep things quiet. Now, it was quite refreshing to see a transfer just out of the blue come out of nowhere. Sky Sports again said that um, he's on his way to London for a medical, and um, he has already... Let me find out. He's already already said goodbye to his Wolverhampton Wanderers teammates. Uh, they're sorting Pedro Neto's contract and he will fly to London from Wolverhampton. That's not even that far, mate. He's already said goodbye to his Wolves teammates and yeah, will undergo his medical shortly, which normally is a given that a player will pass. But maybe uh, I'm, I'm very, it will be very likely that he passes it because Chelsea would have looked into his injury history. But I do want to, after this, look into his injury history because I do know he's had problems with it before. And are we going to be signing another injury-prone player? Hopefully not. The other sort of news coming out is that apparently Chelsea, because it has come out of nowhere, we, were, we did know that we were interested in a winger, but it was meant to be a right-footed left winger. Apparently, Chelsea went big on Pedro Neto because he can play right wing and left wing which is what he's done for Wolves and when he has played there he has impressed so on either flank he is left footed though we'll look at his profile in a second and that's what Fabrizio Romano was claiming um yeah so I imagine we won't be signing a right footed left winger now unless something pops up right at the last minute that's available but I imagine this is our winger um now I will share the screen with you guys. Don't know if that works properly. Um, oh, looking at the wrong. That's his brother. I was just doing my research. That is Pedro Neto's brother. Here he is, the number seven of Wolverhampton Wanderers. He's twenty-four years old, so he doesn't fit into this super young. He fits into the under twenty-five category, but not the super young young players with huge futures ahead of them. I'll get rid of the ad. Um, he's he only turns 25 next March, and it's currently, what, July. So he's only really just turned 24. So he's still young, you'd say. He's a, he's a short, nippy winger, 1 meter 72. Um, has played 10 games for Portugal, scored. Uh, it says position right winger, but I'm going to show you something below. Uh, yeah, there you go. Left-footed, attack right winger. Main position right winger, but it says other positions left winger. And attack in midfield. And you know what Enzo Mareska said? That players see themselves as at one position. But him and Pep Guardiola have done it before. Just told him, like, if you play five metres away from that position in field or the other way around, it's not that different and you still have the qualities as a footballer. So his contract was ending in 2027, three years' time. Um, so, yeah, it says he's worth 55 million euros and that's we signed him for 60 
plus 2.5. So we really haven't overpaid, I don't think, especially when you consider the fact that Spurs and Arsenal have been a long, long, long interested in him as well. So I want to go to his stats of all seasons because on transfer market they do a quite nice thing and they show how many times he's played in each position this is literally throughout his career beginning um playing for braga then lazio but the majority of his games have come for wolves he only played what 10 10 games for lazio what four four games there i don't know um oh there you go he's played 10 games for the under 19s lazio five games for the actual lazio uh, and then three games for Braga, two for Wolves under 21, but 135 for Wolves. Now, the big thing is that his end product, his output isn't, you can see there, 14 goals and 24 assists in 135 games. That is not outstanding. You should be expecting as a winger, for paying 60 million euros for a little bit better output than that. But he has been injured, uh, hampered by injury. And has been playing in a Wolves team that's been chopping and changing ever since he joined. Different systems, different managers, and not really the most quality team around him. Although they have been able to stay up um, every season. So yeah, here we go. He's played 44 games as a left winger and 36 as a right winger. So it's pretty balanced, to be fair. Now, we know our right winger options are obviously Noni Madueke and Cole Palmer. But it's looking like Cole Palmer could play that inside role. But he could also play the right wing role just as well. Um, Noni Madueke has had a good preseason, and then on the left hand side we have Raheem Sterling and Mikhail Mudrik, and we were apparently looking for a left footed winger, no, a right footed winger who plays on the left. But it doesn't make sense because I'm trying to stay in the centre of the frame. It doesn't make too much sense because at the end of the day we have two wings on each side, and that's all you really need. But I think we want a bit more competition. Mudrik's not living up to expectations but i do think we just need to be patient with him sterling's a little bit too inconsistent and then like i said palmer can play on the inside and um so that's why we've gone and signed someone who can also play look 19 games as a center forward 14 as a little shadow striker and 13 as an attacking midfielder he's versatile pedro neto and i'm pretty i'm confident that enzo Mresco will be able to find his best position and get the most out of him he's yeah, he's very quality. You can tell if you watch Premier League football, you can tell that he's a great player on the ball. And I'm pretty sure he scored a couple against Chelsea in the past. He has a good end product and it just needs to be coached out of him or coached, improved into him, drilled into him to continue with that. Um, so yeah, here's the output. The last season played 20 games, scored two goals, nine assists. Not great. The season before that, he played 18, no goals, one assist. Season before that, 13, one goal, one assist. Um, season before that was his breakout season in the Premier League. Oh, no, it wasn't. His first season in the Premier League was 29 games, three goals, three assists. But then seen after 31 games, five goals, six assists. Like, nothing major, nothing incredible. Like, But Arsenal fans have been wanting him for a long time. Spurs fans would have loved him. He, he He's a class player. And playing for Chelsea under Enzo Mresca, I, I have no doubt that these numbers will improve. The other thing I wanted to check with you guys is his injury history. Because we know last season Chelsea had a lot of injury problems. And I do know that Pedro Neto did have a long standing injury problem. So throughout his career, he missed nine games for Lazio. That's fine. He's missed 25, 25 days there. 14 days there. Two injuries when he was at Lazio. But at Wolves, it's a little bit more dodgy. Starts off with a calf injury. 21 days, that's three weeks, not too bad. 11 day knock, three day knock. This is from October 2019 to July 2020. So he was fine in his first season. And then it got to, um, that's not even the second season. The, the end of the second season. 297 days that's almost a year with a knee injury i assume that's an acl i think he did do his acl but 297 days that's what wesley Fofana did this season he missed 52 games for wolves that is an absurd number of of games to miss through one injury i think it, i'm pretty sure it was his acl um, which is very common in football nowadays uh, and then he had an ankle injury when he came back from that or oh, he returned february 22 
ankle injury was October, so quite a while after that, and missed another 27 games and 127 days. Came back from that in February. He keeps getting injured in October. What's he doing? And then was out for 58 days till Christmas. 11 games missed. And then last season, missed from March till the end of the season. Missed another 12 games. But he is relied on heavily at Wolves as one of their game-changing players. And at Chelsea, like I said, there'll be a lot more rotation. We're, we're going to play a lot of games, but we'll have conference league. Hopefully get deep into the Europa uh, FA Cup and the Conference League, um, as well as the Carabao Cup, sorry. Uh, and then this is his stats, his profile on FB Ref. He's 5 for 8, so that makes a bit more sense. Born 2000, left footed, 50k a week as wages, so it fits into the wage structure quite nicely. He'll probably get a little pay rise, moving to Chelsea. But his stats, there's a lot of green on here. Non penalty goals, that's his actual output. We were saying that his output isn't incredible. But hopefully it would improve. His non his non penalty expected goals is decent, however. So maybe he needs to work on his shooting, his clinicalness. Um, he doesn't take too many shots, but kind of average, forty seventh forty seventh percentile. But his assists per game, that is crazy. So when he is playing, he has a big effect, getting assists, ninety ninth percentile. Expected assisted goals, yeah, shows that he's not just getting lucky. He is actually getting in the great areas. And putting in good balls and playing little balls, cutbacks to the strikers to get the assist. Shot creating actions, again, pretty impressive. Coming down, uh, pass completion, pretty poor to be honest, but he will have to um, improve that if he's playing for an Enzo Maresca pass, pass, pass system. Um, which we haven't actually seen too much of. I thought it would be pass, 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 like Pep Guardiola. Um, during preseason, but to be honest, we're not really doing that, and I'd rather see more passing. I don't know what he's doing, but um, I, I do trust Enzo Mresca. I think he is the right man for the job. Um, going down, to, doesn't make too many progressive passes, which is interesting because he's got so many assists. They'll just all be crosses, I assume. I don't think there's crosses on here, but progressive carries 94th percentile. That's showing that he's taking so many players on per game, and um. Been coming out successful, successful take-ons, that's successful take-ons. So that's like dribbling with the ball, progressive carries towards the goal. Successful take-ons is one-on-one -on -one, uh, against another, against a defender. Is involved a lot, progressive passes received, so that's balls over the top or in behind when he's running onto it, he gets a few of them. His defensive numbers aren't great. Um, and then I, I always find this interesting, similar players to Pedro Neto. As midfielders, okay, we got him. Um... Julian Brandt, Wilson Odebert, these are some good players. Martin Odegaard, but obviously he won't be playing midfield unless Enzo Mareska wants to play him in one of those inside number 10 roles. Um, we'll wrap up this video in a, in a minute. Um, but yeah, if you look at the likes of these players, Nico Williams um, as comes out of top, similar player to Pedro Neto. Side Ben Rama, Jeg Rover, not heard of him to be honest, Leroy Sane, Kubo, Rafael Liao, Jeremy Bogo, Usman Dembele. Some absolutely great wingers who we know great with the ball, but maybe their final final shooting, their final product, their final output needs to be improved. Um, which kind of is a running theme along these, especially Usman Dembele. Liao's pretty good at scoring goals. Uh, Kubo's got great control of the ball. He's very small and short, but like he doesn't actually get that many goals at the end of the day. Nico Williams had a great Euros and... We have been linked with him, but Pedro Neto seems like it's interesting that it came out of absolutely nowhere. I'll be back. I think he will be. He's a great signing. He's still young, 24. He's a tricky winger. He fits the profile. We wanted a left winger, but could have done with a right winger. So what are we going to do? We signed both in one player that can play versatile. He can be either side. And um, he's 24 as well, so he's older than Madrid, but he's younger than Sterling. So he does have potential, but he also does bring a little bit of um, seniority to the team. And also, we've nicked him from Spurs. So if that's not a reason to like the video, then I don't know what is. Thank you very much for watching. Tell me your thoughts on Pedro Neto down below, and goodbye.